Okay, gamers. Uh, semester's over. That makes it gamer time. <laughs> so, uh, today we're playing Lord of the Rings, The Third Age. Uh, this is probably going to be a series. I'm going to try to beat it by the end of December, um, before the next semester of school begins. Uh, why are we playing this game? Uh, good question. Uh, basically, um, nostalgia. More or less. Uh, give me just a second. Okay. Okay. So, uh, we don't actually want load game. We're gonna start a new game. And we're gonna watch the first cutscene here. I wonder if I get copyrighted for this, because this is technically scenes from the movie. The beauty of the elves fades. Let me try and get in closer. So you guys can hear me talk this time. And hopefully it won't be too loud like other times. Or at least the game volume too quiet. It looks like it should be fine. I get OBS like behind me. I was gonna try to do a gag where you could like see the OBS on the TV screen and Obama but Obama's just too tall <laughs> for another ring oh <laughs> god like I enjoy the scenes from the movies but this is like so low frame rate and quality like, you can probably count all the pixels in that <laughs> and with it, Sauron enslaved the races of Middle Earth. It's still fun to see, though. But not uh, don't get me wrong. Diminished, for some stood fast. Wait, I, don't, I don't know if that's the emulator chopping, or if that's actually just how it is. <laughs> Either way, you literally can't tell anything happening in this scene. <laughs> We're just gonna skip past this. Get to the actual game. Welcome, warrior of Gondor. Your road here will not be an easy one. Much will be risked in the war that is to come. But you will justify my trust. This I sense with all my heart. This actually is pretty clean. But like, uh, when was this released? Look, Nazgul. Stand Already. Aside, you are in my way. Hmm. <laughs> oh, we're just gonna skip because it's a guaranteed failure. I remember that much. You literally can't even hit him. Well, this was released in 2004, November 2nd, 2004. I used to play this with my dad all the time. Because it's like two player, like the second player would control another character, while the first one would, like, you'd be the second character in combat, while the first character would actually be the one that moves around in the world. <laughs> oh my god, look at this cutscene. <laughs> that is beautiful, and absolutely tanking my frame rate. But yeah, I remember that's how we played it a lot. Um, I used to play as the dwarf a lot. Um, Hadhod, I think is named. That was my main. What grace has been given to me? Let it pass to him. Let him be spared. To you I bestow this gift of my people. It braces the soul and binds the hearts of others. Yeah. I live because of your bravery, my lady. What favor might I grant you? There is no time. Hurry, we must find your equipment and heal your wounds. Epic. Alright, adventure mode. Here you travel across Middle Earth. Find hidden items and battle groups of foes. 
Scenes. Gandalf the Grey speaks to you of events in Middle Earth. View these scenes in the Epic Scenes section of the menu. Quest journal updated. You received an epic scene from Middle Earth. View it now. Nah, I won't. Uh, the first thing we're going to do, though, is go to options. And I just want to breeze through this game. I don't really want to. I don't feel like <laughs> making it harder on myself. So I'm going to set the difficulty to easy. And I'm also going to invert these. Cause I don't know if it's just the way I have. I don't know if it's just the way my, my GameCube is set up, but like the control sticks inverted. So I'm going to fix that. Uh, we got some equipment. Scouting shield. Oh, look, you even like equip it. Equip it. <laughs> you can switch characters. It's so cool. I just love this shit. And then you got like that icon in the corner. If you saw that on the top left, that shows you like as it gets more um, not clear. <laughs> Uh, it shows you if you're getting close to a battle. And here's our first battle. So we're just gonna bash this dude. Boom. Perfect score. <laughs> I remember all those fucking victory animations too. Damn. Action points. They were just like every other RPG, because that's exactly what this is. Idriel, First Age, Galahidrium, Spirit, Wandering, Pendant, and some King's Foil. A pendant given to the kin of ancient woodland elves. Um, ooh, look at that. Special, plus two strength, plus four dex, plus three speed, plus one constitution. Hmm. Cool. Can I get that for, like, every character? Oh, is it, like, just the equipment that does that? Okay. So we go to his his new um, shield to look at. Okay. Forgot about that. Interesting. Nice details. Anyway, there's another chest. I hope there's no enemies guarding it. Oh no! <laughs> Didn't see that one coming. I haven't played this beginning section like five times to try and get my setup right. Hopefully it's actually good. <laughs> and a nice crit. A double critical. I'm kinda surprised he didn't die from that, considering it's a double critical. How does a double critical do less than her critical like do seven more than her regular critical? <laughs> Either way, we leveled up. So we can choose what stats we want to increase. Like so. Um. Dexterity is hit chance. Speed is. Increases our defense. Hmm. Uh, Constitution is HP. <laughs> Spirit is AP. Strength is base damage. All right, we're gonna go strength and constitution with him. And for her, we're gonna go spirit and speed. Sure, <laughs> that sounds good. And we got some Lembus. Oh, he's one of the trolls from um, Hobbit. Isn't that cool? I heard a voice on the road. Yes, I know. Who could it? Patience. Oh look, she's got her amulet that we, that we got. No, but I do see orcs ahead. Ooh, orcs ahead. What do we got this time? Three. That was the HP from the last guy we fought. That's kind of interesting. Oh, let's try these archers. They're kind of annoying. Dang, he's dead. Oh, maybe I should use some leadership to some points in that. That increases our attack. Ooh, a fell slash for 29 HP. 
too bad he's dead now. And he's about to be. Oh, no. We're gonna see it when I see Idriel's victory animation. Yep. I remember seeing this one a lot because that was a lot my dad weakened him and I finished him off. <laughs> and another level up. Nice. Um so I also kind of want some spirit for him because of his leadership stuff. That's pretty good. They're good buffs. Um, I'm going to constitution on this one just so she has some HP. So that way she's not just like the weak healer kind of thing. Now right, here's our first save point. And we'll just overwrite this top one because that's just the one I was testing with. Same exact place, but this time. Oh, we did it slower. Shame. Inside Gondorian, your wounds must be healed. Oh, there's no subtitles. I need to activate Weapons. those. Provisions. The elves are very resourceful. Long have we kept such way stations for times of great need. I am Berethol, captain of the Citadel Guard of Gondor. And I am Idriel. I serve Galadriel, Lady of Light. I know her. Take what you need. She's in the book. <laughs> Alright. Let's get some subtitles. Let's get some surround sound too. Why not? Leave of old Toby. King's foil. He leaves Olympus. And Gondorian Steel Citadel Guard Pauldrons. Oh, and Limbus. Uh, that's not what I wanted. Equip, new equipment. Yeah, eight extra armor. Nice. I think there's a chest out here, too. Oh, that's the wrong way. There's, we missed a chest already. Dang. This isn't going to be a 100% speedrun, either. Oh, we can go back. Oh, there's a chest here, too. Dang. Uh, well, there's one bottom leaf. We got in here. Second Age, Elven Silver Tiara of Eriador. End Draught File. Alright, so I'll see what this last chest is and then we'll go to equip it just in case it's new equipment too. Yeah, right over here. Slime of Orthanc. We'll just save just in case. I wonder how long we're gonna play today, because I can't actually see how long I've been recording without looking behind me. That's just kind of an awkward motion. Oh, whoops, didn't want to do that. <laughs> oh well. Some extra armor, nice. And we'll just run towards the flashing red dot. Oh, actually, I'm going to turn off this. No. I kind of want to make it so that the um, radar doesn't move with the camera. I don't always appreciate that in video games. I kind of like it still. But what can you do, I guess? Orcs are amongst them. There are too many. They have no chance! Help me defend them! <laughs> oh, so weird. We also have four of them. But we only fight three. Anyway, um, we need some leadership. I'm gonna turn my volume down. <laughs> I'm gonna turn my volume down a little bit. My headphone amp here. It's a bit too loud. Hopefully that means it's not too loud all around. OBS. I don't know. I don't care at this point. <laughs> uh, we're gonna get rid of this man in the middle. He's annoying. We get shot in the pelvis. It's always the same spot, like right through the gut. Um, 
actually. We're gonna water spirit this man. 195 damage. And then from here, we can probably just attack these guys. Oh, it doesn't one shot him. <laughs> but they missed. He didn't though. Let me know in the comments if I'm talking too much. <laughs> Or if I'm talking too little. Like maybe I should just never be quiet and just like always have a constant stream of my own consciousness. Uh, just falling out. Uh, we won. Kind of cool. Didn't level up though. We got some treasure though. Third Age Elven Gold to play to fall. Third Age Steel Ethelian Longsword. King Spoil leaves. Gar Gor Goroth Ash and King Spoil. They will trouble you no longer. No, King Spoil leaves are for the whole party, but King Spoil is just for one character. What do you mean by that? It is nothing. Hasten to Rivendell. I have cleared the road for you. I am grateful, but you must return now to the passes. We saw evidence of recent battle there. Come, Gondorian. Some may still survive. Holding up. When a character has accumulated enough experience points, it will level up and gain stat points, which allow you to in increase your character stats. I think we actually leveled up. Oh, we did from that. I was like, we didn't actually level up from that fight, but it's telling us we. <laughs> it's telling us about how to level up. Oh. <sighs> Uh, what am I going to go here? Um, Spirit and Constitution. Sure. I don't care. This is the way we came from. Maybe. I don't know, we're just going to go forward. I don't really care for exploring. Encounter meter. In some areas, the Eye of Sauron will appear as your chances of fighting a battle grows. Uh, let me equip our new equipment. Look at that. It gives me extra dexterity. Hmm. Base damage times 10, base damage times 6. Wow. And then she got lower portion of elf armor, including a skirt over chainmail. Hmm. It gives me plus 2 dexterity. Vulnerable against blunt, but resistant to pierce. Is that one resistant to blood, but vulnerable against slash and pierce? Right now we're having a lot of slash, so we probably want to not be weak to that. I assume arrows are pierce. That just kind of makes sense, and then blunt would be like clubs. Oh. Oh, we didn't fight. I saw was going pretty bright. We didn't actually have a fight. Scene transition. Oh, we're definitely going to have to fight for these chests, though. Alright, maybe the second one. <laughs> Guess not. So we're probably gonna come out of that cave later at some point. How much of the game will be completed? Still 0%. <laughs> Third party character. I think there's six of them. Oh, no, there he is. Badly wounded. He's Wait, the ranger. I played as him a lot too. They'll kill him. He's pretty good. Hold on. Oh, you're playing dead. Hello, lovelies. You live. No thanks to you. Can't you see I was hunting them? You want to use the crows? Lure the wargs in close. They kill faster that way. You were of the Dunedain. At your service, lady. You meant to help me, so perhaps you may. Perhaps you should finish off the rest of the pack first. More wargs. Ooh, quick climb. I see they get to move first. Or maybe just one of them. Um... Oh, he doesn't attack anytime soon. You can change weapons? I bet it's for the bow guy, because he has a bow and a sword. I think it's better probably to focus on this on the bow, honestly, in my personal opinion. That's why I always used at least. So you can examine, you can inspect an enemy more closely. I wonder what that does. Oh, it shows vulnerabilities. HP, AP. His vulnerabilities. He is strong against blunt, 
Fragile against Pierce. I mean, like, uh, I use this turn. Like an arrow, maybe. So we got Ranger Craft, which is something, and this uses the spirit power, this uses bow skills. So I'm not quite sure the difference is entirely, but I'm just going to use Creature Bane, because he's a creature. Dang, 292. <laughs> Drill leveled up, and no new equipment. We leveled up though. Epic scene. No thanks. Okay. Oh, we all leveled up. Three points this time. Let's give him some speed just to catch every other stat up. And then go with some strength. Then he has a lot of deck he has a lot of dexterity. And he gets nine points. So we're gonna pump up some speed. Maybe some spirit and some strength, because why not? And everyone can use Constitution. I'm kind of making these even, aren't I? <laughs> uh, strength and Constitution. And let's take a look at his equipment. So he has a bow. I think he has a sword too, but maybe he does use his bow. I don't know. Here we go, skills. So yeah, this is what, um, when you use a skill you get AP, and you can kind of choose like which one you want next. I could focus on that, or that. Uh, we're going to focus an Airy Flurry, because that's two foes, which is kind of cool. But, um, we got Ranger Craft. Hmm, cool. Some passive skills. I think these just kind of happen automatically. I'm not sure how to level those up. And perfect mode, something we haven't used yet. Let's keep looking at skills. Um, we only got some one. Okay. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> and then I'm not sure which way to go next, because we don't have a floating dot to tell us. <laughs> so we'll just go this way until we reach a dead end. Going plan to appear as you approach enemies. Make sure the party's prepared for the upcoming battle. So I wonder if that's like those are the planned fights, but then the other one, Sauron's Eye, is like the random encounters. Hmm. That was like the way. I'm not sure actually which way we're gonna go. I don't really have a map either. But that way was the cave that we could see we could have gotten a treasure chest from, so maybe we wanna go that way. Either way, we're having fights, it looks like. Okay. So yeah, that one was talking about perfect mode where just as we deal damage, and that bar on the right will go up, I think. And when we get it all the way full, we can do like a really powerful attack. Oh, I should have used the spirit power. Oh well. Dang, 171. Pretty strong. 183 crit, nice. Adriel leveled up, Elogos leveled up. Oh, we got equipment for someone. Oh, I see what we gotta do. We gotta destroy three ward packs. Okay. Okay. And then we can move. Then we can actually go forward. Well, that's cool. We killed Toby. Let's level up for the next battle. Here's some strength. He's not as weak. Uh, I don't know about him. Sure. 
And somebody got new equipment. A new sword. That's good. Okay, so yeah, this is the cave we were going through the one time. Just more words. I really should just use my AP when I can, so I'm leveling up and getting new skills. <laughs> 387. I like seeing big numbers like that. Two, three. I'm not sure where the last one at. The last one will be at. Maybe back this way. Oh, it's a little Barry Thor. <laughs> um, I don't really think our love ups matter that much as long as we're not just. Completely disregarding a stat. What brings you to this place? We are on easy difficulty. I will tell you. But first, we must make our way to one of the elves' healing altars. Oh yes, thanks for telling me why we must do that. Oh, we still have something else to do. So one more pack we need to kill. So maybe it's up this way because that way was a cutscene. So, if it's not up this way, we'll just go back down there. But I have a feeling it'll probably be up here. Yep, because there's a treasure chest. Yep. <laughs> Sorry, these are technically jump scares for you guys. There's no real warning for them. I, I need to use my powers. Oh, Blast this man. Gone. Oh, he's not dead. Uh, let's go with a sword for him. We can farm this later if we need to, but it'd be nice if we just don't have to. All work packs destroyed. Can actually progress the story. Okay, I'm done checking Twitter now. So I went to a surplus store today, uh, JDM surplus in Crestline. It was a pretty cool place, not gonna lie. I would definitely go there again. <laughs> Look, it's Sam. Yes, we did shelter here from Saruman, but to no avail. Oh, it's spotted as miles away. <laughs> cool. But we pressed on. Seeking the easy southern route for a more dangerous passage over the mountains. But the White Wizard held other plans, and that route was denied us. Hmm. I need to watch these movies again. We are not far ahead of your brave company. Hmm. We're on Moria. Heck yeah. Anyway, um, as I was saying, I went to a, a surplus store today, and um, it was a pretty cool place. It had like school supplies, uh, electronics, and mechanical parts. I didn't visit the mechanical parts as much because I, it's just not as interesting to me as the other parts were. Not that the school supplies really that interesting, but like, I mean, you kind of get what I'm saying. But uh, it was also kind of a mess and really hard to traverse. <laughs> like there were just kind of like parts and gears laying on the floor everywhere. 
Damn, we're gonna like turn around and get hit by someone. Yep. <laughs> but um, yeah, like the Atronics was pretty cool. It was a bunch of like old stuff. I was really hoping to find a um old keyboard, uh, like one of the IBM ones, because there's a lot of older stuff there. But no avail there. Um, it was really fun just to like look around there for a while though. Um, just do that on him. Ooh. Nice special effect. It was fun to walk around there. There was like projectors. Um, there was some old computer parts. There was like a ton of CPU coolers. Like there's like these weird speaker things. It was like for medical usage. I didn't, I didn't know what those were for, but they were like everywhere. <laughs> They're like wooden blocks with a speaker, like woofer kind of attached to it. It was really weird. I should have picked one up just to like have it. I know that sounds weird, but like. I don't know. <laughs> we probably wouldn't achieve anyways. But there's also like this one corner that was absolutely lined with like uh, DVD, um, yeah, DVD drives for computers. It was just like a bookshelf just covered in them. It was pretty, pretty cool to look through. I um, also bought a Chromebook there for like $40. Uh, it's an Acer C720. I'm gonna put Linux on it. I know that I've said the Linux word. Uh, Paul's gonna dislike the video. Uh, Shoutouts to Zazi, the Beast, on YouTube. Go follow him. <laughs> but I don't know. I just kind of want to tinker with it. It was cheap, you know, for a Chromebook, and it was kind of an impulse buy. Not gonna lie. Oops. But I'm I I don't know. It's got like SD card reader, two USBs. One of them's 3.0, and it's got HDMI slot on it. It's like a school Chromebook. So there's like a serial number like etched into the cover of it and like it's a bit roughed up because you know kids can't respect shit <laughs> but it's in pretty good condition otherwise it's just like the case is damaged like all the keys work and everything I'm gonna put Gallium OS on it because it's like literally designed to be used with Chromebooks and I probably just use it as something like um because I already have a laptop and a desktop so it's like oh why'd you buy a Chromebook Hunter but um I kind of want to just want it because it's like something I can just throw in my bag, you know, when I'm going like anywhere and I really have to worry about it because it's just a cheap Chromebook. You know, it's not something I necessarily care about that much that if it would get damaged or anything. So that's kind of my logic behind it and it just seems like something cool to have, you know, put some Linux on it, do some coding on the go. I bet the battery life is probably better than my current one too because I, I run Linux on my laptop. I like dual boot Windows 10 and Debian and the... The fucking battery life is horrid. Like, I get like two hours most, and the CPU heats up so fucking hot. Cause like the fans don't work for, like, um, the fans kind of work, but like, I don't know, it's weird. I've tried like power saving things on Linux, but it really didn't help that much. And yes, yeah, the CPU still gets hot. And like, switching the two dedicated graphics cards, that's a bit tricky. That required a bit of tinkering. I know I'm saying all these bad things about Linux, I still like it, and I still will endorse it, <laughs> but sometimes it just has some, it just has some troubles, but uh, that doesn't matter too much. Oh, we didn't get to the save point. Oh, there's a guy all the way up there. I bet I can't target him with my sword character. Yeah. So, this the, the reason I'm playing this game, uh, besides nostalgia, is I was actually kind of inspired by it for my uh, Unity game that I'm, I might make, or might not. Like, this concept of, like, ranged enemies. Like, I wasn't even, like, thinking of this game when I thought of the concept, like, hey, what if instead of, we make an RPG, but what if instead of having, you know, three characters in a line like this, we have two in front and one in the back. So the character in the back, they can't be targeted by normal, by normal uh, melee attacks, kind of like this enemy setup right now. You got two in the front, one in the back. You can't just attack the one in the back, you can only use a ranged attack to do it. But they also, well, he has a bow, so it doesn't count as much. But they can't use melee attacks themselves because they're they're behind the line. That was kind of my concept, and I kind of expand on it a bit more because maybe you could have like multiple setups with the three people. You could have like the triangle they have right now, where it's two in the front, one in the back, or you could do like a reverse triangle where it's one in front taking like the, all the damage, and the other two in the back can just be like support kind of like things. Yeah, you, know, you just have the one there being a tank, and the other two can do whatever. Or you can have like all three in a line like it is now if you want to be traditional. I thought that would be a cool concept and like 
you know, I'm already making a cookie cutter RPG. Like, I might as well try and do something unique with it. So I thought that could be a cool way to do it. Um, so leave some feedback in the comments. <laughs> if my explanation confused you, uh, just let me know about that too. I can see if I make like a dedicated video just for that to explain my concept for an RPG game that I you know, won't make, but that doesn't matter. Oh, I learned a skill, Company Valor. But anyway, I've done a lot of talking today. <laughs> I've also been recording for 35 minutes, so after this fight, I might call it. I might call it for today. But um, I've had been playing this already. I think we have three more characters. There's the dwarf. There's another girl. And. Uh, Rohimarin, spear guy, pretty sure. And you're gonna, there's also, cause this is like, like you saw Gandalf saying like you're not too far behind for your own party. You can actually, um, sometimes there'll be NPC, there'll be a character in your party, like a fourth one, like Gandalf or Aragorn or Legolas, which is always pretty cool to see. But um, yeah, thanks for watching. Um, uh, if you like the video, leave a dislike. If you dislike the video, leave a dislike uh, and subscribe to Zazi the Beast on YouTube and Kolia. I'm pretty sure they're both linked in my home page or whatever. Yeah, thanks. Bye.